Nothing sucks more than when you look down, your gauge is flickering, all of a sudden, bike stops running, you have to pull over to the side, and you're going, oh man, I got a dead battery. But why did you have a dead battery? Could be you have a bad charging system. In order to check your charging system and make sure it's working right, it really doesn't take a lot. It takes one really simple tool, a multimeter. If you don't have one of these, get one. You can buy one for like $12 at Harbor Freight. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get to wherever the battery is. If it's a cruiser or some kind of or some kind of other bike other than a sport bike, you might be able to get to the battery without having to take the seat off. Now on the R6, the front seat comes off with two bolts on the back of the seat, just up underneath the padding. Grab my trusty T handle. Tear off the seat out. Once you can access the battery, you're gonna take your multimeter and set it to DC. Check your voltage. If it has an auto setting, set it on auto. You're looking for about 12 and a half volts when the engine's not running. And I'm showing 12.34 volts. That should start the bike. Now when you start the bike, you're looking for the same thing on the battery poles to read at least 13 and a half to 14 and a half volts. 14 and a half is definitely optimal. If it's reading under 13 and a half or closer to 12, 12 and a half, you've got something wrong with the charging system. Well, 11.7 volts is definitely not charging. I can let you in on a little bit of a secret. I know it's the stator. Now the reason that I know it's the stator is that I've had this bike in here before. Now that I've got that oil drained, I've got the pan moved so that it's just underneath the uh, underside of the cover here. Now you do have a plug that's gonna be coming off of the stator and it's gonna be headed directly to the regulator rectifier. In order to get your uh, your stator out on this particular bike, it does require a number 30 Torx bit. And that is that guy right there. Now, pushed. They do require that you have some RTV underneath on this other side. So if you can see, this is stuck on here. So I'm gonna be really, really careful while I remove this thing not to break the gasket. Just like that. Now I can slowly remove it from the dowel without hurting anything too, so. Okay. Clean that up a little bit and I'll salvage my gasket. Because as you can see, that sucker's pretty new. We just put this one on. And pop your stator right out. And set that one aside. We're gonna go ahead and slap this bad boy in there. That's more appropriate. All right. Now we are gonna use blue Loctite on these. Now don't tighten anything down until you've at least gotten the bolts seated and th you know at least threaded in. Get yourself a little black RTV. And on this bad boy, you're actually gonna want to RTV this leading edge right where the gasket meets the, right where the gasket and the cover match together, you're gonna want to put some RTV in there so that you don't get any oil flowing just underneath the little gaps in the gasket. Now you're most certainly going to have some dowels on this thing so if they do come out with the cover pop them back into the the block and that way it's easier to set your gasket when it's time to put this bad boy together and pop the cover back on any luck shouldn't have any issues I've got my 
my trusty multimeter back out. I'm gonna fire this bad boy up, see if we're getting a charge. <laughs> test and actually do the job of replacing the stator all in all i think it was only about an hour's worth of work thanks again for watching go ahead and check out some more videos if you'd like or hit that subscribe button